Tonight on Connecticut's news station, the Republican race for the White House reaches Connecticut. We'll hear Nikki Haley's message at a GOP dinner this evening. Hurricane season begins tomorrow, but this year's forecast is especially tricky. I'll explain why ahead. Plus, a brewery unthawed. A popular spot in downtown Hartford finally reopens nearly four months after its pipes froze and burst. Also, signing day at EB will show you how more than 100 high schoolers will begin their careers at Electric Boat. And a pint of Netflix. See how a Connecticut company is working with the streaming service for show-themed non-alcoholic beer. Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we do begin tonight with Congress taking a major step toward preventing the United States from suffering a historic default. Good evening, I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Julia LeBlanc. Thanks for joining us. The House just finished voting to approve a deal to raise the country's debt ceiling. Fox 61's Brent Hardin joining us now in the Breaking News Center to tell us all about this vote and what's next for lawmakers to avoid that default. Brent. Uh, yeah, Julia and Ben, the bill to allow the U.S. to continue borrowing money to pay its debts is now advancing to the Senate. President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy reached that deal last weekend, despite opposition from progressive Democrats and far-right Republicans. Voting just finished up on the House floor about a half an hour ago. The bill passed by a 314 to 117 margin, with 165 Democrats and 149 Republicans supporting it. The vote comes after weeks of negotiating between the two parties to avoid a default that would have had global economic impact. The deal would suspend the nation's debt limit until January of 2025. Non-defense spending would be roughly flat next fiscal year and increase by 1% the following year. The spending plan cancels about $30 billion in unspent COVID-19 relief money. It also expands work requirements for people receiving SNAP benefits or food stamps. What's not included are Republican efforts to cut some parts of the president's agenda that have already been signed into law. Now, raising the debt ceiling is something that Congress has done dozens of times under presidents from both parties over several decades. The bill now moves on to the Senate, which is expected to vote on it later this week. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says Congress has until Monday to pass a bill for the U.S. to avoid defaulting on its debt. Here in the Breaking News Center, Brent Harden, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Julia, Ben, back to you. All right, friends, thank you so much. Certainly something we'll be following very closely. Let's take a check on our weather with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank, and I'm expecting it to be hot, hot, hot over yeah, the, the next few days. Continues, huh, yeah, we felt warm out there today, but it will be downright hot for the next couple of days. We're looking at high temperatures right around 90 degrees away from the Connecticut shoreline, and we could even challenge the record during the day on Friday, although I do want to say right out of the gate, both days, tomorrow and Friday, will be cooler at the Connecticut shoreline, and the heat is not going to last. Taking a look at the air quality, there is still some reduced air quality, especially in southwestern Connecticut. This is still from wildfires burning in Nova Scotia, but we are going to try to lift that out of here as we head through the overnight hours and through the day tomorrow. However, that being said, we do have air quality alerts for a different reason, just a stagnant, warm air mass, which we're going to talk more about in just a little bit. Right now we're looking at temperatures that are mostly in the 60s, although some 50s in parts of the state. Overnight lows right around 50 degrees and then heading into the day tomorrow. Some early patchy fog and then temperatures are off to the races. 70s at the beaches, including 79 in Guilford, but 87 in Middletown and highs near the 90 degree mark for the Hartford area. And it gets even hotter for Friday. We'll talk about that. Plus the heat ends with a bang, timing out showers and storms, plus a cooler and more unsettled looking weekend forecast coming up. See you shortly, Rachel. Thank you. We do have an update tonight as a man was arrested after being accused of injuring a Waterbury teen in a hit and run crash. 58 year old John Egan of Waterbury turned himself into police this evening. Officers say 17 year old Brian Kelly was riding a scooter on West Main Street late Friday night when he was hit by a car. Doctors at Connecticut Children's Medical Center are now trying to save Kelly's life. He said such a good boy, friendly. He's very like nice guy. He was he came hoping like to get a better life going to the school. There's no visible bruising, uh, but he he did it, hit his head when he went down, and I guess he hit it hard enough where it's created some severe swelling on the brain. Egan posted fifty thousand dollars bond. He's due in court on June twelfth. 
We have an update now to breaking news. We first brought you last night at 10. Police have identified the man hit and killed by a CT rail Hartford line train in Berlin. It happened on the tracks near Kensington Road in Surrey Lane on Tuesday night. Police say 23 year old Amani Ashley was walking south on the tracks when he was hit. He was pronounced dead on scene. Amtrak is looking into the incident. A New Haven man known for posting rap videos on YouTube was found guilty of murder during a playground robbery. A jury convicted 26 year old Ricky Trainham in the shooting death of 33 year old Rondell Atkinson back in July of 2021. Investigators say that Trainham and 24 year old Jordan Rudell went to the park with the victim. They allegedly stole his belongings and shot him before running away. Someone jogging in the park found Atkinson's body the next day and train him was found days later with the victim's car. He'll be sentenced in August. Well, new intent tonight, the Republican presidential primary reaches Connecticut. A former U.N. ambassador and South Carolina governor Nikki Haley spoke at the state's GOP Prescott Bush dinner. Fox 61's political reporter Emma Wolforst has been there. She joins us now live in Stamford with what Haley had to say. Good evening, Emma. Good evening, Julia Ben. Yeah, very much a campaign style speech from Haley this evening. She hit on top issues like inflation, the economy, education, and even crime. And she spoke for about 30 minutes to a very receptive ballroom. It's empty behind me here now, but it was very packed before. Lots of applause for Haley. And she told supporters in the audience tonight to support her in what she calls her mission for a strong, and proud America. Now, Haley announced her campaign back in February. She's joined by other hopefuls in the field, like former President Donald Trump and now most recently Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Haley focused on her track record in the South Carolina State House and at the U.N., saying she's been underestimated her whole life and it's made her a fighter. She talked about bringing the Republican Party together, saying they've started siphoning people off, which she adds is not how to win. Don't complain about what you get in a general if you don't play in this primary. It is time for a new generational leader. It is time to leave the negativity and the baggage behind us and move forward once and for all. This evening's dinner is the state Republican Party's largest fundraising event of the year. More than 5,000 in attendance tonight, uh, 500, excuse me, in attendance tonight. And having a current presidential contender as the keynote speaker, not lost on those here. Connecticut GOP Chair Ben Proto saying tonight, Haley is our presidential candidate, quote, one of many, but one who's with us tonight. Now, Haley has been trailing in the polls, both Trump and DeSantis still in the lead here. But Haley says tonight that polls may change. And she says, quote, these are not the polls you'll see a year from now. For now, live in Stanford, Emma Wolf Forced, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Emma, thank you very much. Next year's presidential election will likely look different at the polls here in Connecticut after state lawmakers pass a bill for early voting. That bill now goes to the governor's desk, and he says he'll be signing it into law. The new system will require 14 days of early voting in general elections and seven days of it for most primaries. There will be four days of early voting in special elections and presidential primaries. Each city and town will be required to have at least one early voting location. I'm just pleased that it happened this year, um, and now it's time to begin the hard work of implementation. Connecticut is currently one of four states that doesn't allow early voting. Once the bill is signed, it'll go into effect on January 1st. New at 10, a popular spot in downtown Hartford is back open tonight after closing for months. Now, some pipes froze and burst in February, causing massive damage inside the old Brown Thompson building on Main Street. Fox 61's Gabby Molina joining us now live in Hartford with how the city helped them thaw out. Right, Gabby? That's right, Julia. City Steam Brewery is a staple here in downtown Hartford, and so many people are happy for them to be back, but it's been a long road for them to get here. Hartford is welcoming City Steam Brewery back with open arms. This is a Hartford institution. Uh, In different incarnations, it's been here for 42 years. Nearly four months ago, the building looked like this. 
A pipe burst back in February and caused extensive damage to all three floors of the building. The water was just running out the front door, running out the side door, running down to the basement, seeping through the floors down to the basement. Getting back on their feet was time consuming and costly. New paint on the walls, new ceiling, new lights, new sound system for the comedy club. That's where the city stepped in to help giving City Steam a $100,000 grant from the Small Business Investment Fund for renovations. We're working hard to help activate empty spaces to bring vacant retail stores back to life. Uh, but we're not doing our job if we let a place like City Steam fail. And its employees aren't letting that happen either. 99% of those who are working when it closed returned, including Michael Donez, who's been at City Steam for 17 years. He's dedicated and come back and hope we can get pretty, pick, pretty much pick up where we left off. He says in a time when so many restaurants are struggling and closing their doors, getting the support from Hartford to keep theirs open means a lot. The fact that, you know, they're willing to put invest into this place, into this building, the restaurant, it, it's, it's nice to see, you know, it's nice to see that they care. As well as the support from their customers. City Steam Mug Club members Ox Guerra and Megan McDonald of New Britain were among the first ones there for the grand reopening. It's, a, it's more than brand loyalty. It's a family here. Uh, it's, it's my living room in town. It really is. And for not to be around them for so long, it's like, it's like a reunion. And it's so great to be able to do that. With the hope that after this bump in the road, there are many more years ahead. Cheers. City Steam Brewery is pretty much neighbors with Duncan Park and the Yard Goats. So coming up at 11, we'll hear from the team's president about what this restaurant means to their fans. Live in Hartford, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.